I've designed, built, and scaled massive systems at Amazon, and now I teach system design to hundreds of thousands of engineers, and I see everybody from interns all the way up to senior engineers holding on to these same five common misconceptions. Misconception number one, caching fixes everything. Let's assume we have a WhatsApp style messaging app with a simple client, probably a user's phone, a server, and a SQL database. Messages live in the database, and we can run a single query to grab the latest 20 messages. Now let's say that in the app, messages feel slow to load, because every time somebody opens the app, we we have to hit the database to get those 20 and that's taking a while. The common mistake here is let's add a cache between the server and the database. That'll speed things up. Now here's why this doesn't help. That data is unique per user and it's not reused very often. So on almost every request, you're populating the cache just to serve it once. You've added complexity for the engineers and cost for a caching layer without fixing the core problem. A better move here is to make the read faster with proper indexing and push the updates in real time to the device. Then we can store those messages on the device in local storage, so as soon as a user wants to open up the app, they're ready to load on the UI. So to recap, caching can be powerful, but it's not free. It adds cost, complexity, and debugging headaches. Only use it where it's needed for hot, repeatable queries. Misconception number two, you can solve all scaling problems by just adding more servers. Let's say we're running an order management service for an e-commerce app. Every single order goes through our service, and then we have to call a third-party payments API, which has capped us at five 5,000 transactions per second. If we scale up by adding 20 more servers or 2,000 more Lambda concurrencies, nothing gets better because we're still bottlenecked by that third-party dependency. In fact, in most cases, it's going to get worse. More servers will fire off more requests, hit the same limit, cause errors, retries, and a spiral of congestion. So the fix here isn't more servers, it's working around this dependency. We have a few options. Number one is changing our access pattern. If there's any way we can reduce requests to that API by caching or anything else like that, we can do it. In this case, we probably can't cache a payment, so we have other options we have to do. The second thing we can do is enforce strict limits. If that dependency is capping us at 5,000 transactions per second, we might have to cap orders at 5,000 transactions per second until that payments API is able to increase throughput. And finally, we could consider a queue to smooth out spikes. We could end queue requests and then drain them at that rate of 5,000 transactions per second. This will protect the payments API, but it adds latency and it might require an async user experience, as in users might have to wait a long time for their order to actually go through. Adding servers can help with scale, but it won't fix a bottleneck in your database logic or a dependency on a third-party API. A lot of the times, rethinking your access patterns and how people interact with your service is a better fix than just adding more servers. Misconception number three, strong consistency is always better. As a quick recap, strong consistency means that once a write is committed, any subsequent reads will immediately return the latest value and there are no stale reads. Now, with an eventually consistent system, once a write is committed, subsequent reads might return stale data in the short term, but eventually everything will converge to the correct value. Now let's go into a simple example. Say we're building a social media app and every post shows a like count and a comment count. If we force strong consistency for every read, then every single time someone views a post, we have to either hit the primary database or wait for all data replicates to be fully in sync before returning data to the user. This increases latency and it pushes down throughput because we're either waiting for synchronous replication or we're bottlenecked on a single primary node. But here's the thing, do users really need the exact like count within one second of somebody else liking the post? Not really. If it's off by a minute or two, nobody really cares. So a better strategy is to match consistency with user expectation. We can use eventual consistency for things like feeds, counters, or business analytical dashboards that run once a day and everybody reviews it at the end of the day. We can use strong consistency for critical paths, things like payments, inventory, checks at checkout or restaurant reservation service where if the data is wrong that actually breaks the functionality of your system. Strong consistency everywhere slows you down and hurts scalability. Always match consistency to user needs and expectations. Misconception number four, microservices fix everything. Imagine you have a monolith, one big application with one server talking to one database. It's simple, easy to reason about, and for small teams, this works really well. But as your app grows and you add more developers, it becomes more and more painful. In a monolith, every code change deploys together. This means that one bad change can take down the entire app. So a natural suggestion here, let's break it into microservices. Now teams can deploy independently, roll back bad changes quickly, and we can even scale services independently like payments or orders without having to scale everything else. That's good, but here's the trade-off. What used to be function calls in process are now network calls across services. This introduces latencies, retry, failures, and debugging complexity, and the services become tightly coupled in new ways, and a single dependency outage can actually still ripple through your entire system. Microservices can be great when you have a lot of teams and clear 
boundaries, but they introduce a ton of debugging, network, and latency headaches. Sometimes a well-structured monolith is a simpler and better choice. Misconception number five, high availability means zero downtime. A lot of people assume that if your system is designed for 99.99% availability, it will never go down, but that's not what high availability really means. High availability means that your system is resilient to failures and designed to minimize downtime, not eliminate it entirely. You can still see outages doing a regional failure during a rolling deployment, or if your load balancer has to reroute traffic. Even with multiple regions and automated recovery, there will still be brief moments of disruption. For example, even though 99.99% uptime sounds amazing, this still lasts for about 52 minutes of downtime per year. The right way to think about high availability is this, designed for graceful degradation, so the whole app doesn't collapse if one dependency is down. Add redundancy across multiple regions or zones and implement fast recovery and failover rather than pretending that downtime will never happen. Yeah, no matter how good your engineers are, there's always going to be some downtime, unless you're Route 53 from AWS, I guess. Thank you guys for watching. If you want more practical system design advice like this, subscribe for more. Even the best services from the biggest cloud providers like AWS, GCP, and Azure only promise 99.99% .99 availability because there's factors that are out of their control. Design with failure in mind, but know that you can't prevent it. The bottom line is system design is all about trade-offs. There is no one solution that is ever a catch-all for any problem. Once you learn to identify these trade-offs and apply the correct solution, you'll be able to build large-scale, reliable systems. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. I'll be covering more practical system design advice in the future. See you guys next time.